What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're gonna talk about expressions and statements. So at the heart of a program, there are a lot of things you gotta learn about expressions and of statements. Well, the first thing to know is, is that this thing is called the assignment operator. It's not the same thing as an algebra. The value of X now has the value of A plus B. That's what the equal sign is. Okay, there's also a thing called white space. So let's say if I have like index equals a plus, plus b, b, right? And then I let's say I, I said a equal to 10 and then b equals to 5, right? Now, this is the same thing as because of white space, like they don't count white space. It's the same thing as that. You're going to get the same value. Basically, enter spaces and like spaces, they don't really count that. So a plus b, you do like a thousand enter spaces, the same thing as the value a plus b. Yep. 15. So yeah. That's just another thing to know. Compound statements. Yeah, you could put statements into block. It doesn't really make sense, but any statement, you could actually put this whole thing into a block. I don't get why this works, but because it's not a method or a function, but I guess it does. See? Any statement you could put, surround it with braces, but should you do it? I mean, can you? Yeah, you can. Should you? Don't. Don't do it. It just makes it more like unreal. Unless it's like a function or like something important, you don't need to do it. Yeah, about the assignment operator, you could do this also, y equals the x, which is equal to a plus b. So if I do like int y and then x, right, and these are just not initialized, and I just set y is equal to x, which is equal to a plus b, this gets the value a plus b, because c plus plus is right to left, then it sets the value to x, x equals to that value, then it sets the value y equal to that value. So this is actually gonna, if you print out y, this should just be 15. Yeah, it's still 15. So yeah, that's what it does. Yeah, expression is any value in C++, anything that evaluates to a value. Like 3.2 is an expression, pi is an expression. Operators are basically like plus, minus, multiplication, and division. Oh, and modulus. Modulus is finding the remainder. y equals to a modulus b. The value of a, which is 10, divided by the value of b, which is five, and then find the remainder, and then set that value to y. 10 divided by 5, which is just 2, the remainder is 0. So y would have the value 0, 0. But if this was like 6, 10 divided by 6 gives a value of 1 and the remainder of 4. So this should have a value 4. Yeah, it has a value 4. And then multiplication, division, multiply is multiply. We give 60, 10 times 6 is 60. Divide. Division is weird. If it's an integer, it would just make it 1 because 10 divided by 6 is 1 and then remainder 4, so y would have the value 1. Just discard the remainder. Addition is 16, 10 plus 6 is 16. Yeah, and then subtraction is like that, same. 10 minus 6 is 4. Subtraction troubles. So if it's unsigned, that means there, uh, there's no negative value. It actually give you problems. The difference should be 50, because 100 minus 50 is 50. Right? So this is fine. It didn't go to the negative value. But if you do, now if you do, 50 minus 100, small number minus big number, small number is 50, 50 minus 100, that'll give you negative, but because it's unsigned, that'll give a problem, because you can't have negative values for unsigned. Yeah, print out an arbitrarily gigantic number, because it goes back to like, after zero, just go to the largest value, and de decrement from that. You could combine the equal sign, so like, if I do int, int x equals to 10, and y equals to 5. And I said x equals x plus y. This is what it'll do. It'll find the value x plus y, which is 10 plus 5, which is 15. And set the value to x. So it's make it 15. You could you could actually do plus equals. It's the same thing as x equals x plus y. Yeah, 15. And you could do the same thing with minus equals. Multiply equals, mod equals, divide equals, 5. Multiply 10 times 5. Set that value to x. Divide it should be 2. Yeah. Yeah. Take 10 divided by 5. Remainder zero, set that value to x. So yeah, x equals x plus one. You guys know what that is, right? It takes the value of x, adds one, and then set that value to the value of x. x now equals to the value 10 plus one, which is 11, right? So you could do the same thing with this. But the difference is that if I set y equals to this, y will now have the value 10 as the value of x, and then it'll add one afterward to the value of x. So then x would have the value 11. So the y would have the value 10 because x had the value 10. Post increment does it afterward. x is equal to 10, right? x doesn't add one to itself yet. So it sets the value y, y equals to that value of 10. 
then it adds one to itself get you 11 so the value y it's 10 x is 11. now if i did something different plus plus x this would add x by one first for it does this fat expression so x will now have 11 and then y is equal to 11 and x is equal to 11. yeah so that's a different operator it's the same thing as order of operation you could put parentheses yeah always put parentheses equals equals asks if like this value is equal to that value it's different from equals boolean is a true and false statement because we already went over that is x equal to y x equals to y i'll put parentheses for now so basically this is going to eva equals equals s is this value the same the value of x equal the value of y and this is it's true they both have 11 because of the pre-increment so this is x equal to y it's going to produce true yeah okay so in c plus plus true is one false is zero so it produced one so yeah, that's true um if you do less than it evaluates if x is less than y and it's false Let's make it 10 and 11. So is 10 less than 11? Yes. Is x greater than y? 10 greater than 11? Nope, it's not. It's 10 equal to 11. And there's also like, less. is it less than or equal? Is it greater than or equal? Yeah, I think you guys understand. If statement, okay, so basically an if statement is if this expression is true, then it will evaluate the statement. If x greater than y is not, if this expression were true, it would evaluate it, but it's not, because 10 is not greater than 11. So it didn't evaluate this statement. L statement is when this statement's false, it's gonna execute this statement. I'm gonna print out 10 is greater than 11. 10 is not greater than 11. 10 is not greater than 11. Yeah, that's when if statement is. It'll evaluate the statement inside the block. Make sure you put braces. There could be problems. Oh, there's also no semicolon. Oh yeah, you could put if statements in if statements. Oh, always use braces, by the way. Okay, logic operators. Basically, if you wanna evaluate something, you could put not and in or so this would evaluate is it true that x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 5 and if they're both equals then yes but if one of them is false it's not going to evaluate so like if i said is it true that x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 5 so i'm going to set x is equal to 5 and y equal to 5 and then i'm going to print x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 5. So since they're both equal to 5, it's going to evaluate. Yeah. And however, if one of them is not equal, it's not going to evaluate. So if I say like, I'm going to change x to 10 now. Since x is equal to 10, 10 is not equal to 5. So one of the statements is false, so it's not going to evaluate. It's not going to do whatever it's inside the if. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't print anything. It's different from an or. An or is like if either one of them is equal. If I set or, if x is equal to 5, or y is equal to 5 it's going to evaluate so if one of them is true then it'll it'll do whatever it's in this block so let's let's just make them both true for now so they're both equal so this is going to evaluate but let's set x is equal to 10 so x is not equal to 5 so this is going to make b false but y is equal to 5 so it's true but because one of them is true it's going to evaluate this whole expression as true and then it's going to evaluate this so yeah x is equal to 5 or y is equal to 5. It's not just if it's x. Like, let's say I said x is equal to 5, but now y is not equal to 5. But because x is equal to 5, the left side is true. So it's going to evaluate to true. And then they will execute the statement. But if they're both false, it's, it's not going to execute because they're both false. If one of them is true, then it'll execute. Yeah. Not. So basically, not just means that what it'll evaluate the statement and then it's going to make it not. So it's going to be complicated. Let's see, is x equal to 5? We're going to evaluate it. We're going to make it not. It's not true. So is it not true? x is not equal to 5. So yeah, x is not equal to 5. This is what it'll, it'll do. It'll evaluate the statement. Is, is x equal to 5? Right? So x is a 10. So is 10 equal to 5? No, it's not. So this is false. But then with the not, it changes it to true. So then I'll evaluate this statement. Make sure you put parentheses. Um, there's something called short circuiting. So for an and statement, if one of them is false, it's not gonna evaluate the other side because it, it, it just knows, the compiler knows that. It just skips this whole if statement for an and. Similarly, if one of them is true for an or statement, it'll not evaluate the other side. This is important if you do something like, okay, is x equal to 5 and 
then I do like x plus plus equal to 5. I don't know. So it's not going to add 1 to x. I said x equal to 10, right? If 10 is not equal to 5, it just doesn't evaluate the right side. So it skips this whole if statement. So this is important because I'm adding 1 to x and I'm checking if it's equal to 5. x is not going to get added 1. It's just not going to run the statement. See? Oh yeah, similarly, if for an or statement, if the left side is true, it's not going to evaluate the right side. So like, let's say I said x, x is 5, right? Then the compiler is not going to evaluate this right side because it knows one of them is true. So it knows this whole thing is true. So it just does this statement. So x is not going to get incremented. That's what it will do. Relational precedent. I think it just goes left to right. Yeah, it just, the relation when you do this, it'll just do left to right. I'm pretty sure. But if you want to change it, you could add parentheses. True and falsehood. Okay, don't write like this. If x and then x equal to zero. This is the same thing as writing if x is not equal to zero. But don't do that. Oh, the ternary operator. Okay, so ternary is basically an if statement, but it's an assignment. So this is what it does. If x is less than five, why? If it's true, in this case, five is less than 10. It's gonna set the value z to the left side, which is x. So z will have the value x, which is five. Z will equal to five. If it's not, it'll set the value z to equal to y. Z should have the value five, yeah. Now let's just change it. <coughs> is is x greater than y? Well, x is 5 and y is 10. 5 is not greater than 10. So it's going to set the value z equal to y, to y, which is 10. So the value z is equal to 10. See? All right, here, pause the video, and you guys could do this exercise. Write a single if statement that examines two integer variables and changes the larger to the smaller using more one else clause. Should also do the other one. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.